Hey YouTube, it's Steph here again, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I have a tutorial for you guys, but we're going to do it a little bit different than what we've done in the past. We're going to be doing a prop tutorial, and uh, we're going to be doing today Newt's Commander's Wand from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Harry Potter series has always been uh, really big, and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them too movie is coming out pretty soon so i figured let's do a prop tutorial i want to do something that's still in that's like still really popular something that's super cheap diy and something that i can teach you that look super super cool at the end of this project so i will show you my whole entire process uh, which i've never done before um, i'll show you just kind of how i think and in all that good jazz every single step of the way and um, what I found that a lot of people are doing once online which is really cool uh, there's a lot of great ideas out there a lot of people are using chopsticks which are very 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 cheap and they use like hot glue and they kind of wrap their whole wand and design their wand and once it's designed they paint it and make it look super super cool I want to do like one step further I want to do one that's just as cheap um, but when it comes to the wand portion the kind of pointy portion at the end um, I don't know my wand terminology but I wanted to get something that's already kind of pre-made to that shape that's just as cheap but I found that with a chopstick a it's shorter and you really have to build out properly but I want something that to the eye or up close it looks a little bit more realistic so I decided to kind of snoop around and see what I can find at dollar stores and different things like that um, or Home Depot and see what I can find to make um, a wand and the two items the two base items um, are still very very inexpensive very inexpensive so I went to the dollar store and for the stem portion um, I decided to pick up a couple paint brushes paint brushes are great because it starts a little bit fatter and it goes skinnier and this was like a pack of ten for four dollars at um, at Dollarama and uh, usually with the wands you want them to be pretty hefty so you try and pick the thickest size and the longest amount I know that Newt's Commander's wand is about 14 inches long so I decided to go with uh, this this kind of longer stem it's about eight and a half inches up to where I need it to be and this goes up to nine which is great so I just take this little piece off uh, which you'll see a little bit later and in terms of the um, kind of handle portion of the wand what I'm gonna be doing is I just went with a very basic dowel 5 8 dowel from Home Depot this is like literally two bucks and you get like a four foot rod and uh, I don't know if you can see that but uh, this will be kind of the base so I have to somehow kind of reduce from this size to this size um, but you'll see that in my process so let's dive right into the process of me making this and then we'll kind of wrap up at the end and I'll show you um, kind of the finished product from here let's take a look so I went ahead and put a couple things together just to kind of get prepped and started here I just kind of started my hot glue gun and I started, you know, pulled out some of the paints and and some of these right sizes for the for the drilling and um, just kind of set up a little bit so that I'm ready to go again when I talked about you can pick any paintbrush size this size right here was the fattest version uh, that I have um, but I'll show you why I decided to go with the second largest version um, you can kind of pick whichever you want at the end of the day probably the fatter one would be better um, but I'll tell you why in just a little bit why I picked the second biggest one and I'm gonna be using these for paint brushing um, kind of final touch from there anyway so no big deal so my first thought process of what's going on here is I'm looking at this and I kind of took the Newt's Commander wand and I know that this is about 14 inches long so when I go to measure measure this just I'm Canadian it's in millimeters is very accurate it just so happened to be exactly 26 inches long or sorry millimeters long centimeters 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 long so 
<laughs> this is all wrong. But anyway, uh, all I wanted to do is there's a split off. And I'll show you this, uh, maybe a more detailed drawing on the screen right now. But there's kind of two, two distinct uh, parts here. There is the handle part, which has a dark brown, very deep kind of brown look. And then it has this kind of bluish hue here. And then from here, it goes into the single wand portion, um, which is going to be this portion. So I pre-measured this in terms of to scale, what would I need to have for this front portion for it to add up to 14 inches, including this back portion? It turns out that I need eight and a half inches in the front and five and a half inches in the back. And then I just measured this kind of 45 degree angle that they have here on, on this end of the the wand and I just saw that it kind of tapers out at about half inch so the first thing I'm gonna do is take this and I'm gonna grab a measuring tape here and I'm gonna be checking where my eight and a half inch mark is it's somewhere over here let's see if I can walk this baby and just kind of take some preliminary measurements all I want to do is kind of see the general blocking of what this is gonna look like to add up to my 14 inches which is what the internet said that it would be so I know that it's around there at the end of the day if it's a little bit longer I don't really care but that's about eight and a half inches and then on this portion it's five and a half inches so I'm gonna go ahead and draw draw out this portion here and I'm left-handed so all I'm gonna do is draw out five and a half the five and a half inch mark is as well as the five inch mark because I know I'm going to be tapering off this little back piece here uh, the reason why and I learned this the hard way the reason why I'm going to be keeping this onto my shaft right here the entire way through is I know that I have to turn this diameter this diameter into this diameter okay so I know I have to kind of taper all this stuff off to make this fit to this so I know I'm gonna be have to have to sand this all down so I made the mistake before I'll show you what it looks like I made the mistake before and I'll see if I have that piece here right here so I made the stick the mistake before of pre-cutting it so this is what it would look like this would get drilled a hole into here and then once that hole is drilled and this fits perfectly into there and then I would go ahead and sand this down but unfortunately I have to sand this down pretty much all the way to the end here and it just seems like it's too much it's too little to hold on to when I'm sanding it on the belt sander back here so with that being said, I decided to restart completely uh, just because I want to get a feel for the wood and what I was dealing with here. But I decided to uh, kind of restart here and leave this on the shaft. It's very important to leave it on the shaft. You want to kind of play it out in your head. It's also easier to drill a hole into this top portion to fit this end of the wand in here. Uh, just easier. Um, it works out easier that way if I keep it on here and I clamp it to the desk and I make a hole. So what I'm going to jump ahead to is um, for the sake of of, uh, of this tutorial and speed, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this hole. Now all you need to do is literally find a drill bit. If you have lots of different types of drill bits, I just suggest making it a test hole and seeing what fits. Now this hole will be a little bit bigger than what I need, um, but that's okay because I can fill it with hot glue and just kind of fill that all in afterwards. So let's take, um, we're going to kind of fast forward ahead and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to first of all drill a hole into here, then I'm going to do a general sand, just a, just a rough, rough sand of what's going on here in this portion and then from there you'll kind of see what results I get. So let's flash forward. Okay, here is what I got. So, um, as you can see here, I, I, I kind of, I'm gonna leave it down here somewhere just for the sake of uh, keeping it in focus. I think I'm on manual focus. So, 
what I did here was I sanded this all down. So it started out as this and ended up like this. I also added, there's some kind of cool features in this, um, in this wand where it, it's almost like it's a broken piece of wood and they got added together. So there's kind of this tapering effect that happens. So I didn't just keep the whole perfectly perpendicular, like a straight cut off like this. I decided to kind of chew away and sand away at, uh, at, at the wand to make it look like it's an extended piece. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the back piece here. So we'll see that in just a minute. Um, but here's what I did. And I, I took the liberty to kind of draw it out a little bit as well, just to get a, a good sense of what I'm dealing with here. So this is what it looks like with the piece on there. If it's pretty well, a little bit big, um, but at the end of the day, that's going to be a pretty sick looking wand. I do say so myself. Uh, it's going to be pretty sweet. Using two very simple materials. This is like a couple bucks. This is like literally $2 from Home Depot. So it's still very cheap to make. Um, before I mentioned the fact that I didn't use the bigger size. And the reason for that is you can see it's kind of mangled and stuff like that. I wasn't getting a good test fit. It just wasn't working. The wall of the wood is too thin and I would have ne needed to pick up a bigger dowel, which in hindsight I would have done just to make a beefier looking wand. Um, but you can see that it kind of bulges out here. It just doesn't, I don't know if you can see that, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit properly. It's too big. So I decided to go with the next size up. I had a fear of that because I did do some test holes and it, it just, it didn't feel right. So this will be kind of my final product. What I'm actually going to think that I'm doing now, now that I'm thinking about it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting these separately because I can. So if I was making this all out of one piece of wood and it's one giant piece like, um, like the chopsticks after the life of me I can't remember the name chopsticks but because of the chopsticks I I, 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 um, I can keep these separate and what I can do with that is create these nice clean lines like paint this ahead of time and then glue it in and then do any type of touch-up paint that I need to cover the glue a little bit later so I sanded this down it fits properly uh, it's looking good. So the next portion that I'm going to be doing, so I no longer need the rest of the shaft. I don't need that anymore. So I did kind of some rough tracing. I took a look at um, a really beautiful inspiration. Uh, this guy, I guess he makes it on his own. And uh, it's really quite beautiful. But uh, here in, in, in this case, uh, I just kind of took some of his illustrations and decided to do some drawing. So I'm just going to show you what I did here. So I knew where the base of it was going to be. And I love the fact, I don't know if you can see this. Maybe I'll just bring it up. See if we can zoom this in a little bit. Okay, that's in focus. I think that's good. Um, what I liked about his is that he had, from this feathering effect, right in the bottom piece it didn't it didn't just cut all the way across here it had this kind of cut out almost as if it was this natural piece of wood that looked really quite sharp i really liked it so i think i'm going to be doing the same so if i had a chop saw with me I don't have it on me right now. Uh, I think I'll just use a jigsaw. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll jigsaw out of 45. I'll clamp this down so it doesn't move. And I'll just kind of get a rough grade. Nice thing about a jigsaw, it really feels like natural wood. When I cut this um, prior, I kind of left it jagged so that I can kind of work with the material. Um, so next up, I'm going to be just cutting this piece and see if I can start shaping um, this next portion. Let's take a look.
I've gone kind of as far as I can with doing this by hand. And now I'm going to see if I can maybe router a line just down here and see if I can get something a little bit more accurate. Uh, this will be pretty loud, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so here's what I did here. I just kind of save you the trouble. All I do is I drew this by hand, um, and I'll show you a picture right now. And what's going on is I'm probably just going to sand this down. I just got a rough shape. Once I paint this, it'll really start standing out. Um, I don't want to go too overkill. So all I'm doing is I'm going to just sand some of this out so it makes it look a little bit more dated. Like it's, it almost has that feel of like, you know those um, bugs, you know those bugs that eat away at trees and they leave like a burrow path? Um, it's essentially kind of what I'm doing. Maybe uh, everything I've, I've wanted to accomplish here. I wanted to accomplish kind of a 45 degree I'll probably add some more notches and stuff like that. Um, just maybe just dress it up a little bit more and probably make, you know, this, this area is really nice. It's just at the surface, but the transition to the deep spot, I think I want to transition that better and maybe transition a little bit better near the front as well. And then once it's all ready to go here, um, that'll look pretty sharp. That'll look pretty cool. All within a couple minutes. It really doesn't take long when you have the right tools to do it. And this is only a couple bucks. So um, I'm going to dress some of this up and then we'll come back. Actually, what I'm going to do for the sake of this is you'll see kind of fast forward to um, when it's all primed and ready to go. And then I'll show you some of the painting that we'll be doing in, in the future. Okay, we're back. Um, so I decided there's one thing that I didn't show you. And I'll show you a picture now. Is I put some of these gash marks that I talked about. Uh, it turned out that with the knife, it wasn't quite enough. It wasn't going deep enough. So I took that router bit with the, the same diamond bit that was on there before. And I decided to add a few scuff marks on there. Also, what I did was um, one, one great technique uh, that I see some people do is instead of spraying something and handling it with your hands and you get it all over your hands, um, also you just get some inconsistencies or fingerprints onto your object. A, a very simple way to do it is just grab like a coat hanger, um, slice, you know, kind of cut it down, create a, a hanger-esque form, and then just add a little dab of glue and then put it somewhere where you know that either it's going to get covered later or you can easily take it off later. So on this one, I simply put a dab of glue and put it on the inside and hung it that way. Um, I just recently took it off and I really want to put it back on to be able to paint with it. So I'm going to put these back on. So I'll show you how to do that uh, while my glue is warming up. I'll just show you on this one. Uh, I could have put it on the back side because I, I would be ripping it off right away. But in this case, the inside is being covered. So I'm just gonna put a dab of glue on there and uh, see if it'll hold. The other thing I just did, just for time's sake, is I, I just get, gave it a primer coat, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't wait too, too long um, before I got kind of impatient and, and I'm uh, trying to get these things painted. So um, what I ended up doing is I ended up touching with my hands that were a little bit soft. And I noticed that I was making like a little Type 
esque marks on here, what's really my my fingerprints. And so what I did was, well, it was still it was just slightly tacky, like just about dry. I went and pulled my hands through, and it, it kind of created these kind of wood grain marks that you'll probably won't be able to see on camera. But maybe if I take a picture at the end, you'll be able to see some of those grain marks. And then what I did, I did the exact same thing, except with this one because it's a it's a plastic and this already has a bark texture to it. I just took a very light piece of sandpaper and kind of just created some directional lines um, in my sandpaper. So it just kind of, once the paint is all on, it'll kind of give the effect that there's a, it's been trimmed down from a, a tree trunk uh, versus just doing it by. Hello, I am back. So here we go. Uh, what I did last night was I just kind of balked out the general color. So uh, this is kind of like, standard tone I don't know if you can see it but uh, just kind of a standard tone probably looks darker on there than what it actually is um, but it's just got this kind of I don't know kind of this beigey yellowy goldy type color um, it kind of filled in some of these cracks which kind of looks pretty good actually um, the thing is it's still it was only a first coat and therefore it wasn't spreading properly because um, it just seemed like it really didn't take uh, that well as well as I just got a bunch of white spots and stuff like that into the second coat here into the first coat uh, the silver is took, took took very well I'll take some pictures of what this one looks like and show you uh, but it seems like it just kind of gave a really really rough version of this um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna add a second coat here I think I'll just give it another solid coat to get a nice solid color and then from there uh, I'll probably just end up doing a, a time lapse of the remaining um, weathering techniques, and that'll kind of explain what I did. There's the reason for that is I kind of get a, I have to get a good feel of what I want to do, and then from there kind of teach you what I which technique I used. I think for this one particularly, because it's a it's still like mimicking sort of like a piece of wood. Um, it is a piece of wood, I guess. All these little nicks and scratches what I really want to do is just add water to black acrylic paint and wash this make sure it gets into all these little crevices make sure the black really sinks in there for a couple seconds maybe 10 20 seconds and then just kind of wipe away the excess and leave that dark in there and probably be pretty close to what I want to do on this technique for this uh, this one what I really like from what one of the guys did is that he kind of did a sponging technique. So what, oh, I guess there's some stuff on there. Um, I guess what he did was he took a darker brown and kind of dabbed on and treated this kind of, I don't know, he did sort of a sponging technique. And then right between the blue, the blue here and the brown, it's, it's kind of gonna dip to black and then dip into a really dark, rich blue slash black. So I'm gonna add a lot of a lot of black in here to kind of take away um, some of this kind of just blandness, and I'm not gonna to touch the silver. Silver is gonna stay the same. But in order to achieve this, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really gonna get some deep, rich black in here by doing a, a simple wash, water and black, getting it in there, and then wiping away, and the black will stay into all these little cracks, which will look super cool. What I'll probably end up doing is doing a time lapse of this just because I don't know which process I'm going to do and I might change it. And then once I'm done, I'll explain to you which one I use for different techniques. I'm thinking maybe I'll do the sponge technique on, on here, but it would look a little bit unnatural. I think I'm just going to do a nice wash and then slowly peel away at it. And then if I, and if I want more, I just hit it more with more of a wash. And if I want to take away, all I do is a damp cloth and I wipe away what I don't want. So it's kind of like a, a, a fine dance between doing too much or not enough so let's get at it
Okay, so we are back here. Uh, from where we left off, I had done some painting. You saw a time lapse of me painting there. Uh, hopefully, everything went good. Um, and uh, what you saw that it, I, you didn't see all the details that I had added, but this is the finished product. So I'll explain a couple things that I did. Um, I found that this plastic was extremely difficult to uh, do kind of weathering techniques just because the black was not staying into these cut grooves and when I washed away um, the black was not staying in there so I took a knife and dipped it in a little bit of black paint and just kind of touched it into those grooves to really make it pronounced. Um, I also made um, the handle here a little bit darker than it originally started um, and the blue tip you could probably not even see on the camera um, I just added a little hint of blue because Newt's Commander had a hint of blue on this portion here. So it, it is pretty sharp. You did like a white or a silver inside the stock of this wood. I'll show you some pictures here. Um, and then the crack turned out really good. And then all I did was I super glued them together. I found that the hot glue didn't work the first time. I had to take it apart and uh, kind of repaint certain portions. Also make it made it a little bit darker at the stem portion here where they join together. It's almost like it's aged and it's kind of influencing this front piece here. And a lot of different color, a lot of different. Um, I wanted just a whole variation of color here to kind of give my own interpretation. This is the 14 inches that we uh, that we saw that was the total length, and I'm super pleased with how it turned out. And uh, I'm just super excited this this was really good it took me a little bit over a day uh, just because I let paint dry and I had to kind of come back to it add a second coat and and uh, uh, but but other than that it took me a little bit over a day to do it just because I had to let paint dry but other than that what I suggest you doing right at the end right when you're done this entire project I just add a coat of clear coat and let it sit I did the front portion of clear coat, let that dry. Then I grabbed, I was able to handle with my hands the back portion and sprayed that in. It seals all the colors in and kind of if you scratch it, it won't scratch away some of the paint. So here's the Newt's Commander wand. Um, I'm, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you can make your own wand at home. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see you next time.